it gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to today's ceremony to celebrate the conferring of the second award for the cultural harmony on Sri Zubin Mataji. In order to appreciate the true worth of this award, I would like to share with you some thoughts regarding the Tagore Award with all of you. Guruji, Gurudev Ravindranath Ji did our country proud when he became the first Asian poet to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature for his works, Kitanjali, in 2012. On the 150th birth anniversary of Gurudev Ji, the Cultural Ministry instituted an award in his name. The award recognizes excellence in different fields of culture, especially promoting global peace and harmony. The first Tagore Award, as you are all aware, was given posthumously to the noted Sitar Mastro, late Sri Pranit Ravi Shankarji. It is my privilege to share with you that the Tagore Award of, 19, of 2003 is being um, given to Mastro Sri Zubin Mehtaji for his outstanding contribution in the field of Western classical music, coupled with his contribution in popularizing Indian culture in the Western world. In addition to the role he has played, he has played an important part for supporting refugees and war, refugees and war victims in various, by raising funds through charitable cons, um, concerts. This has been widely acknowledged. Shimetaji is a well-known person and much loved figure in India. He has received India's highest civilian awards, the Padma, Shri, Padma Bhushan in 1996, the Padma Vibhushan in 2001. He has also been bestowed with prestigious national and international awards, including the Star of Hollywood, Walk of Fame, and the United States Nation Life Achievement, Peace and Tolerance Award, among many other awards. Here I am reminded of a well-known incident recorded by the famous scholar of Indian classical music, Shri K. Narayan Menanji, who observed that when the Israel Philosophic Orchestra was performing in New Delhi on the invitation of late Sri Pandit Jawaharlal Nehruji, Panditji met and spoke to most of the participants uh, and musicians during the interval. At that time, Panditji spoke warmly to Sri Zubin Mehtaji and late Pandit Ravi Shankarji. Panditji's words proved prophetic, and we are recognizing the talent he spotted many years ago. With these words, I welcome you all once again for, at this award ceremony. Thank you. In our divided world, there are few who rise above nation, yet stay rooted to home remain proof against prejudice and sensitive to suffering and bring joy to people throughout their lifelong work. One such individual is Maestro Zubin Mehta. His is a story of singular achievement. Since the time he left India almost 60 years ago to study music in Europe, success, it would seem, has chosen him for its own. Achieving distinction even as a student at Vienna, he had, by the age of 27, 25, conducted three of the best-known symphony orchestras in the world, the Vienna, Berlin, and the Israel Philharmonic. A rapid succession of appointments then followed. No other Indian has achieved such distinction in the world of opera. His engagements as a humanist are equally well known and significant. Zuman Mehta would have been just as good a musician, but a lesser man, had he not engaged with humanitarian issues around the world. This he has done not by grand discourse, but by doing what he knows best, making music, raising funds for war victims, and in remembrance of those who perished in wars. <coughs> In Zubin Mehta's universal spirit, we find an affirmation of Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore's vision of a world that has not been broken up into fragments, 
or by narrow domestic walls. In an impassioned quest of his ideal, he has traversed vast stretches of imagination, glimpsed the beauty that may be ours in life, and sought to capture here what might be sn snatched from the stars. In so doing, he has lost distinction of the shadow lines that divide man from man, and envisioned anew that heaven of freedom where the mind is without fear and the head is held high. As we confer upon Zubin Mehta the Tagore Award for Cultural Harmony for the year 2013, we salute this distant dwelling son of India. Thank you. The Tagore Award for Cultural Harmony for the year 2013 consists of a shawl, a plaque, a citation, and a cash award of one crore rupees. May I now request the President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, to now confer the award on music maestro Zubin Mehta. Mr. President, Honorable Ministers, I stand before you in really utter humility because in the end, I'm just a simple musician like those colleagues who played outside. They are my colleagues. I wish I could have conducted them. You know, when I received a few years ago Padma Vibhushan, I thought my country was exaggerating because I've lived outside for about 60 years, but never given up my ideal of nationalism or my desi khana. That has gone with me everywhere. I've, I've been, I'm here for the first time at Rastraprasthi Bhavan. Read all about it in my school days and in my education in Bombay at my Jesuit school, we didn't only learn Shakespeare from those Spanish priests, but also poems of Ramindranath Tagore. So from my earliest youth, And there is a street in Tel Aviv called Tagore Street. He was, and recently I was in Buenos Aires on tour and I met a few literati there who said, you have no idea, and they didn't know about this award. He says, you have no idea the influence Tagore played on South American writers and poets. He was there before the First World War. So this man's aura has always been with us. And we Indians have to be extremely proud that such a man has given us this legacy. Talking about his Nobel Prize, I still lament the fact that Gandhiji was never awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. In fact, if you look it up, the year of his assassination, 1948, there was no peace prize given. And I wish the committee there would still consider awarding it to him posthumously because who, ladies and gentlemen, deserves a Nobel Peace Prize more than our Mahatmaji? I'm again very grateful to receive these various awards. <laughs> And I'm grateful, Mr. President, that you made time this morning because we are going this afternoon to Kashmir and we need all your blessings for the concert tomorrow because we are only playing from our hearts. That's all we want to do. It has been my experience before, just to cite one example, in 1994, we played in Sarajevo 
during the Bosnian war. And during the two hours of the concert, literally there were no shots fired. That doesn't mean we brought peace to the region at all. That was negotiated by other experts. But still, the inner peace that soldiers felt on both sides, because it was broadcast, and we never must underestimate the power that the inner peace that music brings to everybody around the world. And I don't only talk about Western classical music, every kind of music. Participating, look at our country. From north to south, we have every village sings, dances, we have different musical cultures, and they go all around the world. And I am so proud to be the successor of Pandit Ravi Shankar, who was like a father figure, who has performed with me in New York, and the last time also here in Delhi with the European Youth Orchestra. That I am to be the successor of this wonderful award. I had the honor to speak at his memorial in California. And he will be sorely missed, not only here, but in the whole world, because he brought the world the consciousness of what is great Indian classical music. So once more, Your Excellencies, thank you very, very much. Very much. I accept this again with all my humility. And God bless you all. Thank you. Srimati Chandresh Kumari Kataj, Minister Culture. Sri Shushil Kumar Shinde, Union Home Minister. Sri Gopal Gandhi, Excellencies, Mastrio Jobin Mehta, Sri Ravindranath Singh, Secretary, Ministry of Culture, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to be here today to confer the second Tagore Award for Cultural Harmony for the year 2013 to Mr. Jubin Mehta. I congratulate the eminent jury of this wonderful choice unanimously in facilitating, in felicitating Jubin Mehta with the Tagore Award, we are not only honoring a distinguished son of India, but we are recognizing his untiring efforts over the decades to convert music into an instrument of peace and harmony. He has made it his mission to bring hope and reason wherever there is conflict and discord to audience across the world jubin mehta has brought a message of optimism and conviction about the shared destiny of mankind his name is synonymous with amity and faith he is a legend in the world of music and an emissary of goodwill between nations. It's only appropriate that this award, instituted to promote the values of universal brotherhood, should be conferred upon him. As the then chairman of the National Implementation Committee for commemoration of 150th anniversary of Guru Dev Ravindranath Tagore, I recall that this award was instituted to celebrate the vision of Tagore for a more globalized and connected world. Ravindranath Tagore was an internationalist far ahead 
of his time. A versatile genius, he was a beacon of the cultural renaissance of India in the 19th and early 20th centuries. His writings on state and society, science and civilization, his musings as a philosopher, his works as a composer, and his creations as an artist reflected his abiding love for pluralism and the deep devotion of the cause of humanity. The lifetime of Rabindranath Tagore was witness to cultural, economic, political and social differences that seem to threaten the very fabric of our society. Through his writings, Rabindranath endeavoured to bring down the walls of prejudice and remind the people of the essential oneness of mankind. Rabindranath Tagore was unequivocally endorsed art and music as harbinger of peace and harmony, which would create an environment for the harmonious coexistence of communities and nations. The Vishwabharati University, established by him, is even today a focal point for international students wanting to experience the culture and aesthetic values of India and the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Ravindranath's deep spiritual insight into music seemed to effortlessly unite the strains of the Western 